Welcome to Indie Resources' fourth video on building a real-time browser-based game. In this video, we are going to work on the map system. We're going to just plop down a map right in between here. We probably make it bigger depending on how we, like I said, I haven't really planned any of this. We're just kind of going doing it as we go. So first, we're going to start just by filling the space with a nice little map and uh, getting it to where we can actually um, change the map and edit it and things like that. So to get started, first thing you want to do is go into, make sure to start your server. Start it up so you have it running so you don't get any errors there. Next thing, go to your media folder. And inside the media folder, you won't see this, but you will see this overland.png. Um, I wouldn't use that. It's too small for graphics. I just threw that in there for Hall's node, but um, for some other features. But what you guys can do, you don't. I'm not really going to put this for upload or anything like that. There's no real reason when you guys can just go to Google, type in RPG Maker tile set, and you will get tons of different tile sets to pick from that you can pick your own. So just grab one of them out there and make sure it looks has some squares in there that you can use um, that, that'll fit real nice. That way you kind of have your own individualistic game. The, the graphics I'm going to use are actually come from a pack I bought, so I, I can't really get rid of those anyway, but it doesn't really matter. We all don't need the same graphics. So if you open up your graphic that you save, make sure to save it in your media file or folder and make sure you know what the name is when you save it. Um, if you look at mine, and yes, I'm using Adobe Photoshop 7. It's uh, for quick for quick editing and things like that. It's not over bloated. I love it. And I can just go in and do some things pretty quickly. So, um, so you can make fun of me later on that. But with the if you, if you uncheck extras, or I'm sorry, if you, if you have the, uh, if once I uncheck extras, you'll see that the, the grid goes away. I just use that to, to kind of give an idea of what, it, what I'm doing. But um, you'll notice that it's, you know, just a basic map. It's got some dirt, things like that in there, grass or whatever. But when I go back and show the... The grid, you'll see that this grid is a 32 by 32 pixel box, and I do that so I can see where I want to where I want to put my graphics, and, and because I'm gonna, everything's going to be 32 by 32 pixel. We're actually going to be using 64 by 64 to start with, but it's still divisible by 32, and our whole map system needs to be divisible by um, 32, so that way it fits well. So once you have that saved, open up your uh, index.html, and we're going to go ahead and start off with our canvas, get it started. Now, the one thing is... The canvas needs to be actually defined before we can use it in our JavaScript, so we have to define it first. So I'm going to take just the script right here, cut it out, and drop it down here. So that way, all this is defined first. Um, <clears throat> so if we do that, we can now create our canvas. So inside the uh, inside the actual HTML. We want to create our canvas right in the span four here that's here. So let's just do, and it's a lot like creating a div. Um, you just do canvas ID and give it a name. We're just going to call it canvas to make it easier. Um, then let's go ahead and give it a width and height so we know it's divisible. Let's do 512. Let's try that. See how that works. Height oops, equals 512. And we'll save that. So now we have our canvas there. It's it's sitting on the page, but it's not doing anything. So now let's make it do something. What we do in JavaScript, we can create a variable, and just to make it easy, we're going to call it canvas. And we're going to grab it with document.get element by ID. And then we want to say we want canvas. So all that's doing is that is grabbing the HTML, um, I, uh, HTML object up there and putting it into this variable called canvas. So now we need to we need to, we need to initialize basically the 2D element of the canvas so we can use the 2D. So I'm going to use a variable that everybody pretty much uses for this. It's just ctx equals uh, canvas dot um, get and it is get context and then we want to just tell it 2D. And there we go. So now that that's created, now we can start doing things with it. So let's 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 get our image defined. So let's just call it. Let's make another variable and call it map equals and new image. So we want to create basically an object that's going to hold our image. After that, we can then let's see. Sorry. Um, so after that, we want to do map dot source because we want to define its source, and this is where we would actually put our file in there. Okay, so then I named mine ground. Could help if I could spell one dot png, and 
so basically what we've done is we've created a new object called um, called map and then we've defined the source now here's the thing if we just go ahead and try to load this onto the the ctx onto the actual canvas context it's not going to work because the image hasn't been loaded yet um, it because the image is going to take longer to load than that is going to be to create the canvas so what you have to do is you have to do map dot on load so we don't do this until it loads equals function and oh come on visual studio okay so <coughs> with that now now once that image loads then then we want to run this and of course we want to actually draw the image so we do map dot draw image oh i'm sorry I'm, I'm actually on the wrong thing it's ctx sorry ctx dot draw image so basically the 2d element of it to draw an image and if you notice with my intellisense you'll see that it's the image name or the actual image object the um, and then the offset so uh, this this can get kind of complicated so I'll just go through this as we do it so we want map and then the first ones are the actual cutout think of it's where your scissors are starting well I want my scissors to start at zero and zero because I'm going to use that first grass block that's in the in Adobe or go to Adobe so this block right here is what I want to use so that's zero zero so I want my scissors to start there I then define how big the image is which it's going to be 64 by 64 so it's going to cut that out right there um, so let's do that let's do 64 by 64 and then the next two are going to be where it's placed on the on the actual map so for now I'm just going to do zero zero these last two numbers don't worry about we're not really going to be changing these too much but for now I'm it's better to just not worry about them. So with that said, we should have just this one block that's 64 by 64 of that first cutout. Let's save it. Let's go back here, refresh. And so there it is. There's our image. And it's just one block. So we've got our first block created. Uh, let me close this out so I don't keep going to it. Um, so now we can, now we got to completely put that all over the whole map. So the next thing, let's just do a for loop. For var i equals 0. And then while i is less than, um, if we're going to do 64 by 64, let's, let's not get too crazy with it, so let's just do 5 for now. And then we're going to do i++. Plus plus. And what that will basically do is that will loop through, um, that will loop through this 5 times and do whatever's inside here. So we actually want it to draw. Let's go ahead and cut that out and let's paste this right in the middle. So... With that said, this is just going to draw the same image in the same place over and over again. So we have to tell it to to actually draw in a new place. So here's where we, here's our starting point. So all we have to do is do i times I'm sorry, whoops. This would be i times 64. Now this is going to give a weird effect. Um, it's going to give like a diagonal effect because we're just every single time we're dropping by 64 and moving over and down by 64, but I just kind of want to show you what it's going to do. Oh, I got an I pro I accidentally capitalized the I for some reason. And then I. Okay, so if we refresh, see, so what it's doing is, is every time it every time it loops through there, it's creating the image, but it's dropping it by 64, and we don't want that. We want to actually have it go straight across. So what we can do there, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, uh, I'm going to do it with an extra loop. So we do for, yes, a loop inside of a loop. And then we do for, let's just do L equals 0. And then while L is less than, less than let's do 5 again, and then L plus plus okay so let's cut this out put this in the middle again so now what we're going to do it's going to loop five times inside of for every f so in other words this is going to loop once this is going to loop five times and it's better if i just show you what's going to happen we want this to be let's see this will be l Actually, no, that'll bring it straight down. We don't want that. We want this to be I and this to be L. And if we go back and refresh, you'll see that it, what it did was, it for every time it went through I, it went across this block. It went five times, and then I um, went up one number, so it dropped to this one went across five times, and then it, it kept doing that over and over again to where we have our map. Now, of course, it doesn't look right right now because we don't have everything set up, but we're going to get all that context part out of the way. So... 
let's um so if we increase this if you notice if we increase this we're just going to increase our total map size to six if we save that this will actually build it even bigger to where it's now even larger and we just got to we just got to make it to 512 but we also got to move some stuff around here so we'll, we'll work on that but uh, the, the other thing i want to show you is if we go back to our Adobe and we look, we might want some sand or some dirt or something or snow or whatever. So to put some sand in there, we could actually, this is, since this is zero, zero, this is 64. We just need to go down. Um, it looks like it's actually going to be out. I probably need to go ahead and remove these little blocks right here, but without doing it, we may end up just go ahead and use this as 32 by 32. But for now, I'm just going to show you real quick. So if this is 32, this is 64, this is going to start at 96. We want to start at 96 and use sand. So if I go back to my code, we want it to be at, we want it to start at zero, um, going x, but y needs to be at ninety six. Refresh it, and we should have all sand. So there's our sand. How that did it was basically it's still it's still starting on this line at zero, but it's coming down to ninety six and starting. And then when we told it to go sixty four by sixty four, so it's still going to cut that sixty four. So think of it as a point. You're putting your point somewhere, and then you're you're almost like this. You're coming out like this and and grabbing it and cutting it. So when we go to build our whole map, and let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do that. So because we don't, of course, we want the maps to be dynamic. So what, let me show you the the simplistic way of doing it, and then we'll we'll go over how it's really going to work later. So let's do our um, map image equals and what we're going to do is we're going to build an array and inside that array we're going to put every single block that we want uh, think of it uh, this is probably an easier way to do it right here let's do this let me uh so this is our map let me tab this over to where we can see it and so we want the first one to be uh grass let's say we want some grass and then we want um whatever that's going to be Maybe a little bit of that, and then more grass, whoops, and then more grass, uh, let's drop in a three, let's pretend water is, is three is water, maybe this is rock, and then we do some, let's see, I've got three, six, seven, I've got three, six, seven, so if you look at this, let me just copy this real quick, paste it, so this is basically our our map looking at our map you'll see that just think of it almost like um like zero's grass one is rock water for every single one of these squares is going to be a square on the actual board up here so this would be zero one two three four five and then it drops down a level six seven eight nine ten eleven and it drops down that's what you're seeing um basically right here and then what we can do is we can feed these numbers to the cutout and that'll tell us where to cut out so you can really simplistic simplistically make a dynamic map with almost very little code and we're going to do that next i don't want to make this video to go too long but i want to make sure everybody understood how exactly we did this right here and how we're going to make it going forward